So, welcome to the final week of the season then. It's day one of week 13, and that means it's the last week of the season. And today we're at Doncaster, Han Shin, and we're also at Caulfield as well. So we're getting around the globe a little bit this week. And we start off with the races at Doncaster. And the first race there is the Betfred.com Nursery, which is a six furlongs. 0-90, that looks a wide open race with quite a few previous winners from this season in there, Django's timekeeper is the top rated, but Sam Pitt for David Robertson is only rated £3 inferior, and King B for Darren Howes has got some good form, so is no play, Richie Blackmore's also won a couple of times this season, and Middleton beaten Jupiter Lady and Beaujou Hesito also shouldn't be too far away in that one, then we'll go on to race 2, that's the Betfred Handicap, that's a 0-85 7 furlong race, and this I think is one of the ones that's got a huge Field. Luckily we're at Doncaster, so it might not have too much of an effect, but I think it'll probably still be a little bit of a nightmare. That one, the top rated horses for Vinnie Gerrard, that's Beaujou Eunice, but trying to pick the winner in that one is pretty much impossible, I'd think, with quite a few running in and out of form throughout the season. They've been beating each other regularly, so that could go to absolutely anybody. The Betfred November Handicap is the final big handicap of the season in England and it's a 0-110 with Sign Polar and Thunder Moon sharing top racing there for Derek Hinton and Darren Thompson respectively but Joshua Sutherland's got Elrond rated on 104 which should be in with a bit of a squeak in that one also Regal Boy for David Robertson Wonder of You for Derek Hinton and last week's Group 1 winner Hither Green gets in off 81 it's a bit of a handicap snip you would think there and also Cookie Geronimo for Darren Howes off 71 is a two time winner so a bit of a lopsided looking handicap there one that could be uh, an interesting race then we go to the long distance race the 0 to 90 handicap the Doncaster Shield and Spanish Steps going for a three timer is the top rated here but has to give weight all round free future for Daniel French He's the second rated one, Zoe Hippopotamus for Graham Clutterbuck, who always comes good at this time of year. And he's good in these long distance races, could well be in with a bit of a squeak with that one. But quite a few of these race against each other regularly, and I think it's just a case of which one is best handicapped on the day that tends to take it. Then we go to the Fun and Friendly Nursery, which is a 0-85 for two-year-olds, Rainbow Lynn and Smallpox for Carla Arigante, the two top weights there. But Madness in the Fast Lane for Stu Gray looks a little bit better than quite a few of these and should take that one for my fellow commentator. After that, we go to the split second sprint, and it will be a split second sprint as well because I'll be going lickety split over the five furlongs here at Doncaster. It's a 0 to 100, and bizarrely, there are only about seven runners, and it's pretty difficult to decide which one's going to win, though. Powerful steps, woohoo, bee boo, hit the heights, and bombastic do look to be. The best ones in there, you would think, but Stu Gray's got the bottom two, Trust Keyboard and Dirty Mistress, rated, rated quite a way inferior to the remainder, so it's probably between the top five, that one. The seventh race at Doncaster is the Autumn Handicap, that's another 0-85 at six furlongs this time, and a slightly bigger field. Twizzle for David Robertson's a top rated there, but Boju Blandy, or a winner last time, Ed, should go well, and Chief Singer for Darren Howes has been knocking on the door of late, and Warren Place, the stable star for Mayor's Ad Mystery, he'll be hoping to sign off with a win as well. Then we go to race eight, and that's the Betfred Yankee Handicap, that's over nine furlongs, and it's a 0 85 and again, quite a few of these have been racing against each other on and off throughout the season, but 1976 was a good second last time out, so it was Tadris Rain, they both look to be in with a chance, Moss Boy, Moss Wood Boy, sorry, for Doug Warren, also looks to be in with a chance, for Stu Gray's got Human Race, which was a winner four times, four races ago, as was Middleton to Sunrise for Alex Cherry, Red Sky for Graham Clutterbuck, looks the one to be on though, but it could be a wide open race that one, and it'll be difficult to tip the winner there, even if you had three or four attempts at it. Then we'll be off to Han Shin for a big two-year-old event, a group three race, the Radio Nikai Nissai Stakes, and Trudia Santiago for Paul Rhodes is the top rated one here, but only just from Millennium Most Wanted for Molliette Surfer and Favourite Lunchbox for Django, who was a good winner last time out. Should be a good race, that one, and quite a few in with chances. Then we'll go to race 10, which is the second of the two, at Han Shin, this one is the Asahi High Futurity Stakes. It's a Group One over a mile on Portal Step. But Django has got pretty good looking form, and is the joint top rate of a Bay of Biscaya in that one. Black Magic for Joshua Sutherland is also well thought of. It probably between those top three, but you can't rule out the likes of John Morgan and Steve Rand in these type of races, can you? So Indian Blessing and Call My Bluff will probably be not too far away in that one. Then we'll be over to Caulfield for the Caulfield Cup, and this is a one mile. 
four furlong group one handicap and the field is huge it could be a real nightmare this one going around this track speaking to Doug who's the expert on this um, part of the world I reckon that the course will struggle to deal with a field of this size so if you're wider out the back you're probably not going to get much of a chance and it's a shame because we've got some really good horses in this Twisted Logic for Steve Rand that's a stable favourite of his that should go well the Derby winner the Coliseum is also in there trying to fly the flag for the younger horses you've got Trev for John Morgan and the Star Lords for Joshua Sutherland Portal Express Escapade and Bad Apple for Django. Plenty in there. Look like they've got chances and really it's going to boil down to racing position and draw I think in that one because if you're drawn wide and you don't get in the in the leading group of a dozen or so you're probably not going to win it. So a bit of a bit of a disappointment that the field's quite so big for that one but um, should still be an interesting race. After that one we go for the Caulfield Guineas which is for three year olds over a mile and I expected a big field for this but there isn't a big field for this one at all. It's quite a small field to be honest. You'd have thought you'd have had all those three year old milers would have been lumped in here but um, they're not and the top rated one is only rated 99 top hat and zed besher for john morgan and django so maybe it was a this is one of those capped group ones that's kept at 100 i didn't notice that it was but maybe it is and anyway it could be a wide open race northern play for serious chill was a winner last time out and the league's greatest windmill tilter will be hoping to bow out of day one with a win in a group one so that's your racing then for today day one i've got a Pretty sure that Doug's back behind the mic today after his um, exploits last week. And I'll hand you over to him now for today's racing.